more practice for the ratio test. The last problem number nine, that one is no conclusion. Uh, the no conclusion one is where hard to find from a book. So the last one, I just make one myself. So let's take a look at uh, number five. So number five, using the ratio test, we have to prepare an and an plus one. So the current term, we just take that straight from the given series. And then the an plus one, we replace all the n with n plus one. And then the beginning of the ratio test, we set up a ratio an plus one divided by an in absolute value. So that is the limit as n approaches to infinity. An plus one. So let's break down the, the power. So that is 10 to the n times 10 to the first divided by n plus two. And then we have four to n, four to the third multiply. This is a multiply. We divide it by an, right? Divided by an. So when you divide it by a fraction, means you multiply the reciprocal of an. So on top, we have n plus one, and then four to n times four to the first divided by 10 raised to the n. And then we cancel as much as we can. So 10 to the n, oh, that is a eraser. 10 to the n, 10 to the n, 4 to the 2n, 4 to the 2n, and then what else? That's it. The 4 times 10, you can take that outside. So this 4 and the 10, you can take that outside. So that is a 40, right? So that equals to the top, you have a 40. Oh, actually, you have a 4. You also have a... F That's an eraser. You have a four, you have a four to the third, so the bottom will be four square. So that means outside of the limit, we have 10 divided by four square. And then the limit as n approaches to infinity, then we take all the left over, the top will be n plus one, the denominator will be n plus two. Still remember how to do this? Very simple. That is raised to the highest power is one, right? So we have to divide each term by n. And then let's do that. So 10 divided by 16, limit as n approaches to infinity, we have 1 plus 1 over n divided by 1 plus 2 over n. When n approaches to infinity, all the fractions becomes a zero. So 10 divided by 16 times 1 plus 0 divided by 1 plus 0. So that is equals to 10 divided by 16, or you can simplify that to 5 over 8. 5 over 8 is less than 1, so less than 1 means, according to the ratio test, the series is convergent by the ratio test. So we have the next term less than the current term, right? So here is how the logic goes. So when the next term is less than the current term, the series is in descending order. So we have a series like this, just for example, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, and then you keep on moving, right? So this is a n, this is a n plus 1, you have the next term divided by the current term that is less than 1. So that means the fact that a series is in descending order, if you look all the way to the right of the series, they are very small values. Very small value, small, how small, something close to zero. As a result, the sum is determined by the first couple values, therefore, the sum is equal to a real number, which is convergence. That's the concept or the ideas of the ratio test. All right, moving on to number six. Number six, Let's pick another color for number six. So number six, we have the sum. n goes from one to infinity. We have n times pi raised to the n divided by negative three raised to n minus 1. So we have the current term. We copy the series again. And then the next term. So n plus 1. And then pi raised to n plus 1. The bottom is negative 3. n plus 1 and then you minus 1. So the, that will be just an n left. All right, set up the ratio. So limit as n approaches to infinity, we have a n plus one divided by a n. That is equals to limit as n approaches to infinity. 
let's break down the power n plus 1 so pi raised to the n times pi raised to the first divided by negative 3 raised to the n and then the reciprocal of a n negative 3 n negative 3 negative 1 and then n a pi n cancellation pi n pi n and then a negative 3 raised to the n and then uh, that's it so this one you just have to bring the negative 3 to the denominator but don't forget that you have an absolute value so you have a limit as n approaches to infinity let's take the constant out so the constant on top we have a pi right the bottom we have a negative 3 so negative 3 raised to a negative 1 that is 1 divided by negative 3 but you have the absolute value of that so take the absolute value then the negative is gone and then inside the absolute value you have n plus 1 divided by n so the highest power is 1 right then you do the same trick you divide each term by 1 over n if the highest power is 2 then you divide each term by 1 over n square just pick the highest degree highest exponent in the denominator I don't care the numerator so when you do that what do you have limit as n approaches to infinity you have 1 plus 1 over n divided by 1 right so that means as n approaches to infinity, you only have pi over 3 less. So this is around 3.14 divided by 3. That is greater than 1. Just like uh, that is not like the previous problem. So greater than 1. What does that mean? That means the series is in a, a ascending order. So greater than 1 by the ratio test, the series is divergence by the ratio test. So what is a descending? What is a descending order looks like so descending order looks like this oh actually it's not descending order it's ascending order you have 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 and then you keep on going right so this is a n this is a n plus 1 so you have 6 divided by 5 that is greater than 1 that means the last couple terms they are very large as a result the sum is equals to infinity so therefore the series is divergent all right so that is the end of number six moving on to number seven so number seven we have um summation n goes from one to infinity we have cosine of n pi over n pi n pi over three divided by n factorial the current term copy this again n pi over 3 divided by n factorial the next term so that will be cosine okay so this will be a n plus 1 times pi right divided by 3 n plus 1 times pi divided by 3 divided by n plus 1 factorial we can definitely play with that and then you set up the ratio as n approaches to infinity you have a n plus 1 which is cosine m plus 1 times pi divided by 3 and then m plus 1 factorial right let's don't write that for now and then the reciprocal of a n n factorial divided by cosine m pi over 3 okay the n plus 1 factorial we can do m plus 1 factorial and then the next term is the decrement by 1 right which is m plus 1 minus 1 so you only have n factorial so as a result, the n factorial can be cancelled. The reason I picked this problem is because there is a cosine. So what is the absolute value of cosine looks like? So cosine, the graph of cosine n pi, just let's say just co co cosine of n, that looks like this, right? And then if you take the absolute value of cosine of n, all the negative parts will be reflected to above the x-axis so instead of going up and down you go like this down okay here go like that so now the absolute value is jumping between 0 and 1 without the absolute value the cosine is oscillating between negative 1 and 1 okay how can we draw a conclusion so we say that 
the absolute value of cosine n is between 0 and 1. So before I write the next sentence, you might challenge me and say, OK, we don't have cosine of n. We have cosine of n pi divided by 3. The cosine of n pi divided by 3 affects the period only. It doesn't affect the amplitude. So the range of absolute value of cosine, whatever you put in the parentheses, is still between 0 and 1 because the pi over 3 affects the period, not the range, not the amplitude. All right, that's why the absolute value is still between n and 1. So when n approaches to infinity, the cosine n is a constant between 0 and 1, right? So the absolute cosine n is a constant value between 0 and 1. Okay, so we let this, we let that the cosine n, the, what do we have on top? n plus 1 pi divided by 3, right? So that will be n pi plus pi divided by 3. So that will be n pi plus pi divided by 3. The bottom is cosine n pi divided by 3. We just let that equals to c, just a constant. This c is a constant. So that means overall, the limit as n approaches to infinity, we only have a constant divided by n plus 1. So as where, what, where, where is the n plus 1 came from? The n plus 1 is came from this piece. So that's why we have an n plus 1. So when n up goes to infinity, we have a c divided by infinity that is equals to 0, and 0 is less than 1. So that means overall, this series is convergent by the ratio test. Ratio less than 1, what does that mean? That means the next term is less than the previous term. So we have a series that looks like this. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, so on and so forth. So this is a n plus 1, and then this is a n. So you take a 5 divided by 6, that is less than 1. So that means as you look all the way to the right, this term they are so small and they are so close to zero. As a result, the sum is determined by the first couple terms. Therefore, the sum is equal to a real number. As a result, the series is convergence. So that is the concept of the ratio test in this problem. All right, doing good. We have two problems left. Let's move on to number eight. Number eight is so fun. So number eight, we have sum n goes from 1 to infinity. We have n raised to 100 power times 100 raised to the nth power divided by n factorial. So the a n plus 1, what is that equal to? n plus 1 raised to 100, right? And then 100 n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 factorial. The a n is just the series itself. Let's don't raise time to write that out n approaches to infinity, we have a n plus 1 divided by a n, that is equals to limit as n approaches to infinity. We have, let's break down the power, n plus 1 raised to 100, you don't need to break this, and then the n plus 1 power, that is 100 raised to the n, times 100 raised to the first, and then the n plus 1, we break it down to n plus 1, and then times n factorial, and then the reciprocal of the series, n factorial on top, and then n 100, and then n, no, not, not n, 100 raised to the n factorial, and then it comes with a bunch of cancellations. So the n factorial, and then the 100 raised to the n, right? So what do we have left? So the leftovers are, limit as n approaches to infinity, we have a uh, 100 raised 100. So I want to break this into two pieces, 100 divided by n plus 1. The other piece is uh, n plus 1 raised to 100 divided by n raised to 100. 
the reason I do this is because we remember this you have a, a raised to the n divided by b raised to the n that is the same thing as a divided by b raised to the n right so the second piece this is what I would like to do n goes to infinity so that will be a hundred and then n plus one this piece will be n plus one divided by n and then you raise to a hundred power all right so this is the limit of one thing times another so we can break this down into the product of two limits the first limit is n approaches to infinity 100 divided by n plus 1 and then the result is multiply limit as n approaches to infinity we have n plus 1 divided by n save some space for for my next step raised to 100 power and then this one what do we have uh, on on, on the first limit the first limit you have infinity right so 100 divided by infinity that is just equals to zero what about the second one the second one you have uh, the highest degree in the denominator oh this one you don't need, even need to do this you can just break this down into n divided by n plus 1 divided by n which is 1 divided by 1 over n as n goes to infinity you only have 1 plus 1 divided by infinity so overall you have a zero times 1 plus a zero which is a zero times 1 then you get a zero zero is less than 1 so based on the root test so the series is absolutely convergence by the root test okay so moving on to the last one the last one has no conclusion uh, the no conclusion one is so rare you can't really find that on the book so as a result I make one by myself we have the sum n goes from 1 to infinity 5 raised to the n divided by 5 raised to the n plus 25 okay so we have the n plus 1 that is a 5n plus 1 divided by 5n plus 1 plus 25 and then we set up the ratio so we have the a n plus 1 which is what I just wrote but I have to break down the power for you 5n times 5 to the first plus 25 and then we divide it by a n which is multiply the reciprocal of the series that is a 5n plus 25 divided by 5 to the n so first we do some cancellation get rid of the 5 to the n and then that is the best we can do and then we put the rest of the pieces together but before we do that this is the bottom is the same thing as 5n times 5 to the first and then 25 is 5 times 5 right so we factor a 5 out and then inside the parentheses we have 5 to the n plus 1 so that is the trick in this problem so back to our limit as n approaches to infinity inside the absolute value we have a 5n raised plus 25 on top and then the bottom you have a 5 uh, you have a 5 oh actually other than that we also have this so we also have 5 to the first and then 5 times 5n plus 1 okay Okay, and then we get rid of these two. What else can, can we do right, right here? What's the biggest degree in the denominator? The biggest degree is 5 raised to the n, right? So the entire denominator is dominated by the 5 raised to the n. So therefore, here is the math that we will have to do. So we have 5n plus 25. The bottom is 5 raised to the n plus 1. So here is the magic. We have to divide each term by 1 divided by 5 to the n. Because that is the highest degree in the denominator. Okay, so we keep on moving. And then n approaches to infinity. The top we have a 1 plus 25 raised to 5 to the n. And then the bottom is 1 plus 1 divided by 5 to the n. So 5 to the infinity is just an infinity, right? So we have 25 divided by infinity, 1 divided by infinity, these are just 0. So therefore, we only have absolute value of 1 plus 0 divided by 1 plus 0. So the result is equals to 1 according to the ratio test. 
this one has no conclusion by what test by the ratio test all right so finally that is the end of this video if you think my instruction is helpful let me know in the comment section below it takes me a lot of time to pick the best problem for our discussion as always subscribe to my channel like the video share the video for me let more people know how to do ratio tests appreciate your help as always i see you all in the next lesson signing out